यूनिवर्सल लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन एवरी ऑब्जेक्ट इन द यूनिवर्स अट्रैक्ट एवरी अदर ऑब्जेक्ट विद फोर्स विच इज प्रपोर्शनल टू द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ देयर मासेज एंड इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू द स्क्वायर ऑफ द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दैम द फोर्स इज अलॉन्ग द लाइन ज्वाइनिंग द सेंटर्स ऑफ टू ऑब्जेक्ट नाउ कंसिडर टू ऑब्जेक्ट हुज मासेज आर कैपिटल एम एंड स्मॉल एम वेर कैपिटल एम इज द मास ऑफ अर्थ एंड स्मॉल एम इज द मास ऑफ मून एंड बोथ लाई एट अ डिस्टेंस डी फ्रॉम ईच अदर एस शोन लेट द फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन बिटवीन द टू ऑब्जेक्ट बी एफ अकॉर्डिंग टू द यूनिवर्सल लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन द फोर्स बिटवीन टू ऑब्जेक्ट इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ देयर मासेज एंड द फोर्स बिटवीन द टू ऑब्जेक्ट is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them that is by combining equation 1 and 2 we get force is equal to g mm upon d square where g is the constant of proportionality and is called the universal gravitational constant the si unit of g can be obtained by substituting the units of force distance and mass in equation 3 as newton meter square per kilogram square the value of g was found out by henry cavendish 1731 to 1810 by using a sensitive balance the accepted value of g is 6.673 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kilogram square the universal law of gravitation successfully explains several phenomena which were believed to be unconnected first the force that binds us to the earth second the motion of the moon around the earth third the motion of planets around the sun and fourth the tides due to the moon and the sun gravitational force isaac newton was sitting under the apple tree and suddenly an apple fell on the head newton starts thinking and conjectured the picture of universal Newton explained that the force responsible for pulling the apple to the ground and the force keeping the moon in the orbit around the earth is one and the same. Same law governs the motion of celestial bodies such as moon and the falling of apple from tree. Let us try to understand the motion of moon by an activity. Take a piece of thread, tie a small stone at one end of the thread, hold the other end of the thread and roll it around what will you observe you will observe that it moves like an orbital this is due to the tension of thread which holds the stone in an orbit now look at the moon and the earth system there is exactly the same case the moon revolves around the earth but the only difference is an imaginary thread that is gravitational force when the moon revolves around the earth you can see the change in the direction continuously and that means change in velocity and if there is any change in velocity we have an acceleration this is raised to a centripetal force that gives the moon moves in the circular orbit let us go back to the stone activity what does happen on the moving stone does the stone fly off along a straight line now come back on the moon and earth rotation if there is no gravity on earth the moon flies off along a straight line Thus gravitation is the force of attraction between two objects having masses in the universe gravitation may be the attraction of objects by the earth kepler's law according to the first law of kepler all planets revolve around the sun with their respective elliptical orbit and sun is a foci second law second law states that the line joining the planet and the sun sweep equal areas in equal intervals of time thus if the time travel from a to b is the same as that from c to d then the areas oab and ocd are equal and the third law states that the cube of the mean distance of a planet from the sun is proportional to the square of its orbital period t or r cube by t square which is constant free falling let us try to understand the meaning of free fall by performing this activity take a tennis ball and throw it upwards observe it you will observe that it reaches a certain height and then 
it starts falling down. This is due to the gravitational force. Acceleration due to the gravitational force of the earth is called gravity. Or we can say force of gravitation due to the earth is called gravity. It is denoted by small g. And the unit of gravity is meter per second square. Let us find the formula of g. According to the second law of motion, force is the product of mass and acceleration. Acceleration due to the gravity of earth is taken as g. The earth is not a perfect sphere. As the radius of the earth increases from the poles to the equator, the value of g becomes greater at the poles than that at the equator. Acceleration due to gravity. Let us do an activity to understand whether all objects falling from the same height reach at the same time on the ground or not. Take a paper and a stone. Drop them simultaneously from the same height. Observe whether both of them reach the ground simultaneously or not. Here we see that the paper reaches the ground little later than the stone. This happens because of the air resistance. The air offers resistance due to the friction to the motion of falling objects. The resistance offered by air to the paper is more than the resistance offered to the stone. Let us perform this activity in vacuum. Put a stone and a paper on the platform and keep the jar tightly. Suck out air from the jar by using the vacuum pump. Now release the platform. We see that the paper and the stone fall at the same rate because there is no air present inside the jar which resists the force. So from these activities we conclude that objects experiences acceleration during free fall. This acceleration experienced by an object is independent of its mass. This means that all fall is at the same rate. Mass and weight. The mass of a body is the measure of its inertia. If the mass of a body is more, its inertia is more. The mass of a body is constant and does not change from place to place. The SI unit of mass is kg. The weight of a body is the force with which the earth attracts the body. That is, weight is equal to mg. The weight of a body changes from place to place. And the SI unit of weight is the same as force. That is, Newton. Let us see in the animation. Suppose the mass of the stone equal to 1 kg on the earth and also on the moon. However, on earth, weight is equal to about 10 newton and on the moon, 6 times lower than the earth. That is equal to 1.67 newton. Thus, we can say that the weight of mass vary from place to place. Let us calculate the weight of an object on the moon. Let us calculate. The weight of an object on the moon is one-sixth of its weight on the earth. Substitute the value of given table in the given equation. We get the weight of the earth is equal to 1.474 into 10 raised to the power 11 g into m and weight of the moon is equal to 2.431 into 10 raised to the power 10 g. Now divide the weight of the moon by weight of earth. We get 0. 165, which is equal to 1 by 6. Thirst and pressure. The force acting on an object perpendicular to the surface is called thirst. The thirst on unit area is called pressure. Or, pressure is equal to thirst by area. The SI unit of pressure is called Pascal, denoted as PA. Let us understand it with the help of an activity. Take a thumb pin and press the pin with your thumb on the cardboard. You apply a force on the surface area of the head of the pin. The force is perpendicular to the surface of the cardboard. And this force which is acting perpendicular to the surface is called thrust. Hold the pin erect on a cardboard. Keep another pin next to it upside down in such a way that its flat head rests cardboard. Press both the pins down by placing a flat object. We observe that the pin which is erected passes through the cardboard. This is because in the case of the erect pin, the force is acting on a small area, whereas in the case of the second pin, the force is acting over a large area. 
Therefore, the thirst per unit area is called pressure. Let us see some examples of thirst and pressure in our daily life. You stand on loose sand. Your feet go deep into the sand. Now lie down on the sand. You will find that your body will not go that deep in the sand. In both cases, the force exerted on the sand is the weight of your body. What you have learnt here is that weight is the force acting vertically downwards. Here the force is acting perpendicular to the surface of the sand. The force acting on an object perpendicular to the surface is called thrust. When you stand on the loose sand, the force that is the weight of your body is acting on an area equal to the area of your feet. The effect of thrust on sand is larger while standing than while lying. The thrust on the unit area is called pressure. Let us take two similar bricks lying on the ground, one in the lying position and another in the standing position. The two bricks exert the same force on the ground because they have the same weight. But the two bricks exert different pressures on the ground because their areas in contact with the ground are different. The brick in the lying position has a large area in contact with the ground. So the force of the weight of the brick falls on a large area on the ground and the force per unit area or pressure on the ground is less. The brick in the standing position has a small area in contact with the ground. So the force of the weight of the brick falls on a smaller area of the ground and the pressure on the ground is more. A sharp knife cuts better than a blunt knife. A sharp knife has a very thin edge to its blade. Due to its very thin edge, the force of our hand falls over a very small area of the object producing a large pressure and this large pressure cuts the object easily. On the other hand, a blunt knife does not cut an object easily due to its thicker edge. The force of our hands falls over a larger area of the object and produces lesser pressure. Due to this less pressure, it is difficult to cut the object smoothly. Pressure in fluids all liquids and gases are fluids. They exert a pressure while a solid exerts pressure on a surface due to its weight. Let us explain it with the help of an activity. Take a plastic bottle and punch some holes on the bottle with the help of a nail in vertical with the gap of one inch from bottom. Now fill the cane with water. You will observe that the water dribble out from the top holes but the increased pressure with the depth causes the water to squirt out with more pressure at the bottom holes. Thus we conclude that pressure exerted in any confined mass of fluid is transmitted undiminished in all directions. The pressure in a liquid is the same at all the points at the same horizontal level. As we go deeper in the liquid, the pressure increases. Buoyancy let us understand the meaning of buoyancy by doing an activity. Take a cardboard and put it in a trough filled with water. You see that the cardboard floats on it. Push the cardboard into the water. You feel an upward push. Try to push it further down. You will find it difficult to push deeper and deeper. This indicates that the water exerts a force on the cardboard in the upward direction. The upward force exerted by water goes on increasing as the cardboard is pushed deeper till it is completely immersed. Now release the cardboard. It bounces back to the surface. The upward force acting on an object immersed in liquid is called buoyant force. The buoyant force is also known as the upthrust. It is due to the buoyant force exerted by the liquid that the weight of an object appears to be less in the liquid than its actual weight in the air. The tendency of a liquid to exert an upward force on an object placed in it is called buoyancy. Objects float or sink in a liquid. An object will float or sink in a liquid will depend on the relative magnitude of these two forces acting on the object in opposite directions. There are three possibilities. If the buoyant force acting upwards exerted by the liquid is equal to the weight of the object acting downwards, then the object will float in the liquid. If the buoyant force acting upwards exerted by the liquid is less than the weight of the object acting downwards, the object will sink in the liquid. 
if the buoyant force acting upwards exerted by the liquid is greater than the weight of the object acting downwards, then the object will rise in the liquid and then float. Archimedes Principle It states that when an object is wholly or partially immersed in a liquid, it experiences a buoyant force or upthrust which is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced by the object. Buoyant force acting is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced on an object by that object. Let us explain with the help of an activity. Take a stone and tie it to one end of a spring balance. Suspend the spring balance as shown. Note the reading on the spring balance. Now slowly dip the stone in the water present in a container and note the reading on the spring balance. The reading shown on the spring balance goes on decreasing until it is completely immersed in the water. The reading on the spring balance gives us the weight of the stone. Since the reading goes on decreasing, we can infer that the weight of the object is decreasing when it is dipped in the water. The apparent loss of weight shows that a type of force is acting on the object in the upward direction, thereby decreasing the weight. We find out that the apparent loss of weight of the solid in the water is equal to the amount of the water displaced. This experiment thus verifies Archimedes principle. Applications of Archimedes principle It is used in designing ships and submarines. It is used in determining the relative density of a substance. The lactometers used for determining the purity of milk are based on Archimedes principle. The hydrometer used for determining the density of liquids are based on Archimedes principle. Density and relative density. Density. The density of a substance is defined as the mass of the substance per unit volume. Density is equal to mass of the substance by volume of the substance. And the SI unit of the density is kilogram per meter cube or kg per meter cube. The density of a substance under specified conditions is always the same. So the density of a substance is one of its characteristic properties. The density of a given substance can help us to determine its purity. Different substances have different densities. For example, the density of oil is 920 kg per meter cube and the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. Relative density Relative density The relative density of a substance is the ratio of its density to that of water. Relative density of a substance is equal to the density of substance by density of water. The relative density of water is 1. If the relative density of a substance is more than 1, then it will be heavier than water and hence it will sink in the water. On the other hand, if the relative density of a substance is less than 1, then it will be lighter than water and hence float in water. For example, ice has a density of about 900 kg per meter cube and water has a density of 1000 kg per meter cube. Thus, an ice cube has a relative density of 0 0.9. So, it floats in water. And the relative density of iron is 7.8. So, an iron nail sinks in water.